On day one, I spawned in as Monkey D. Luffy, the rubber boy with a straw hat. Yo ho ho, I'm going to be the future king of the pirates. But it looks like I'm just a little kid for right now. At least my dreams are big. I gotta go find some good food to eat so I can grow up to be super strong. But there's nothing around this village but coconut trees. Whoa, a storm is rolling in. I better take cover. Is that a lightning bolt or a person? Avast ye straw hat, Zozo. I be Captain O'Kilowatt, and you've had the misfortune of washing ashore of me island. Here you will be doomed to wander the many dangerous terrains in search of me greatest buried treasure. If ye succeed within 100 days, ye may keep what ye find. But if ye fail, ye will never be allowed to leave. Buried treasure? Well, Monkey D. Luffy is a pirate, so that treasure is as good as found. Ye had better hoped that you find it, or ye will never voyage on the sea again. Challenge accepted, you stormy scallywag. Good luck, Zozo. You'll need it. <laughs> Captain O'Kilowatt laughed evilly and rained down lightning on the village, so I ran for cover. He attacked several houses and even wiped out the villagers. Talk about no mercy. I have no idea how big this island is, but I'm going to scour every block of it until I find that buried treasure. The dangers ahead are completely unknown, but I will face them with a bravery suited for the future king of the pirates. On day two, I started to explore the nearby tropical forest. I have six hearts right now, so I need to stay in the least dangerous areas for right now. Who knows, maybe the buried treasure is in the easiest place to find it. That would be one crazy trick, wouldn't it? Oops, did I say this forest wasn't dangerous? What I meant to say was, it's filled with ghosts. Somehow, they kind of look familiar. Are you guys the ghosts of the villagers from back there? Yes, we are. Why couldn't you have been hit by that lightning instead of us? Just lucky, I guess? Not for long, Zozo, because we ghosts are going to haunt you. Oh no, I can't punch ghosts, and I don't have any weapons that can affect them. I gotta run to safety. Ah, get away from me! All of a sudden, I saw something swoop down from above. It picked me up and carried me away from the ghosts. When I got my bearings, I saw that I was at the top of a tall tree. There was a bird with a colorful beak in front of me. Wow. Were you the one who saved me? Yes, sir. I'm Stan. Stan the Toucan. And whenever there's someone in trouble in this tropical forest, I come to the rescue. That's cool, man. I'm Zozo. Want to join my pirate crew? Sure can, man. Every great pirate needs a bird sidekick, after all. I'm looking for the buried treasure of Captain O'Kilowatt. Do you know anyone who can help? I just might. Follow me. On day three, Stan the Toucan took me to a small workshop among the trees. Wait until you meet my friend, Titus the Armorer. He makes all sorts of useful items. Sweet! An armorer could be useful to have on my pirate crew. Yes. He could make me items and gear fit for a pirate king. I looked around and saw lots of really awesome armor. Did you make these all by yourself? Sorta of kinda, my good pirate. I do the crafting, but it takes brave adventurers like yourself to gather materials for me. I've had loot brought to me from all the terrain on this island, and I always take what I'm given and make it into something better. Neat! I've accepted Captain O'Kilowatt's challenge, so I'll be visiting all of the terrains myself. What can you tell me about them? Well, the main ones are the ancient ruins, the Cloud City, and the Misty Maze. Nobody who has looked for Captain O'Kilowatt's treasure has ever found it. But there's plenty of rare items I can make for you, if you bring me back stuff from each of them. So, you're saying I should visit each of those three terrains in the next 97 days, if I want to have a chance at winning? Pretty much. I set off for the terrains without a moment's delay. Luffy never passes up a chance to adventure. He also never travels without his crew, so I took Stan the Toucan with me. On days four to five, I was still in the tropical forest, so I made sure to gather wood from the trees. Once I had enough, I made my first set of tools. Yes. The wooden pickaxe will serve me well in gathering stone, but I won't be needing them for long, because I'm gonna use that stone to craft myself a set of stone tools. All right, time to build a base for the brand new Straw Hat Pirate Crew. I laid a bunch of wood blocks for the foundation and made sure to give lots of space for all the new friends I'm going to recruit. I get the captain's quarters, of course and Stan gets a birdhouse all to himself. I too can. Believe this base is wonderful, Captain Zozo. Oh, I get it. Two can. Well, two can play that game, Stan. Very funny. But leave the puns to me, won't ya? Gotta put a kitchen in here, too. I may not have a chef on my crew yet, but I am starting to get really hungry. While I was placing down the chest, I saw a strange item fall out of a tree. Say, isn't that the gum gum fruit? 
It is! Not only did it fill up my hunger bar, it also made me stretch out like a crazy rubber boy, and I grew to the size of regular Luffy. I've got nine hearts now! With that much health, I'll be able to last much longer in a fight with mobs now. I'm that much closer to becoming the king of the pirates! Yo ho ho! On days six to eight, I was on my way to the ancient ruins when I saw a flock of giant penguins. How adorable! Except, they didn't seem friendly at all because they were chasing someone down. And it looks like another human. And look, they're wearing an enormous chef's hat. Well, now I gotta help. I was so mad that I started smoking and my skin turned red with anger. Now my fists are stronger than my sword. Looks like the gum gum fruit I ate earlier gives my punches extra knockback. And I'm going to need it because these penguins totally outnumber me. I need to hit them quickly and then dodge. If they surround me, I'm dinner. With a gum gum powered punch, I took down the biggest one and the others retreated. March back home, penguins. Don't mess with the future king of the pirates. You okay, chef? Thanks to you I am, but how did you know I was a chef? Just a lucky guess, based on the fact that you are wearing this slightly oversized chef's hat and a chef's apron. You got me. I am a chef. Name's Skyler. I'm going to the ancient ruins to find a spice that can really cook my cooking up another notch. Wanna come with? I could really use a bodyguard. Sure. I'm headed there myself, looking for treasure. Personally, I think food is the greatest treasure of all. I like both treasure and food, for different reasons, of course. I can't eat gold. Or can I? You really shouldn't try to eat gold. It's not food. I'll take your word for it. You are the chef, after all. On days 9 to 10, I arrived at the ancient ruins, the first of the dangerous terrains that I must explore to complete the challenge. Before going any further, I decided to consult my loyal crew. So, Stan, Skylar, are you excited to explore the ruins? You know what, Captain Zozo. Excited? No. Eager to find the ingredients? Yes. But remember, this place is dangerous. What are you so worried about? Uh, it starts with that giant dinosaur right behind you. I thought these guys went extinct years ago, but it seems like I might be the extinct one if I don't get out of here. Ouch! That bite took away a lot of hearts. If only I knew how to use all of my different gum gum powers. Skylar has a weapon, but even together we're no match for this dinosaur. We've got to run away and fight another day. My crew and I ran away from the ancient ruins. Captain Okilowat wasn't kidding around when he said these trains were dangerous. And this one was only the first one. That was pretty brave back there, Zozo. Even if you didn't win. My hunger meter was getting low again, so I decided to go back home and grab a bite to eat. Which would be a lot easier now that I had a chef on my pirate crew. On days 11 to 12, I made sure that Skylar felt right at home as the head chef of the new Straw Hat crew. I built her a small house and made the food preparation area even bigger. To make sure we had plenty of ingredients, I also constructed an outdoor farm and a flower garden where we could grow plants and made pens where we could keep animals for meat. Of course, no pirate base would be complete without a flag to tell intruders who we are. The skull and crossbones mean business. Yar. We'll be heading back to the ancient ruins in a few days. Anything else I should know about that place? I heard that Captain Okilowat has members of his own pirate crew guarding each of the terrains. No way! He has a crew of his own? Yes, and you are going to become a part of it if you fail the challenge. At least, that's what's happened to all the other ones who tried it before. He forces people to join his crew? That's terrible! I can't let that happen to me! Just be careful, Zozo. The other pirates thought that way too, before he got them. Don't worry about it. I'm not like those other pirates. I'm gonna be king of the pirates. I can talk big, but these former challengers would all be strong opponents. I had to get in gear to face them. I decided to train my battle skills by fighting some cave centipedes underground. I gave their legs to Titus the Craftsman, and he was able to make me a special suit of armor that could climb walls. That'll come in handy later. On days 13 to 15, I was in the tropical woods when I realized I needed a new way to train. Stan, what should I do in order to get stronger? I need to become powerful enough to take on the dinosaur in the ancient ruins. Have you thought of going to one of the other dangerous terrains first? Maybe you'll be able to find something to help you there. That's a good point. Might I recommend the Cloud City? With your new climbing ability, you should be able to get up there through the mountains. I'll leave right away. I set off for the highest point on the map, climbing the walls with my centipede leggings until I reached the top. 
At the top of the mountain, it started to snow and visibility decreased. But wow, this place is amazing. There was a bridge connecting the Cloud City to the top of the mountain. Who knew there were materials that could be used to build buildings on top of clouds? I'm definitely gonna have to take some of these special blocks back with me. I better grab them fast because I can hear something inside the city. It looks like I've got company. An ice gas is flying towards me. So you must be Captain Zozo. I'm afraid you won't find any treasure here. Are you a member of the Okilowat crew? Yes, I am Ghastly Gust, the keeper of Cloud City. My wind powers will blow you away. I could feel Ghastly Gust attempt to launch me off of the mountain, but I didn't give in. This was a fight I had to win if I was going to complete the challenge. The Ghast had ice ball firing abilities, which trapped me in ice and slowed me down while also hurting me. With my gum gum abilities, I was able to stretch upwards and reach the gas. This way with my punches, I pummeled Ghastly Gust. When I took him down, he dropped some sort of weird key. I wonder what this opens. During the fight, it seemed like I had achieved a new level of strength. I decided to return to the base and placed one of the cloud blocks on the ground. Nothing happened. Oh, this thing is broken. I want a refund. I started jumping on it and I suddenly leveled up. Sure enough, I was faster, stronger, and could jump two blocks higher. Whoa, I've gone to second gear. In this most powerful form, I have 21 hearts. The training was a success. On days 16 to 19, I went to explore the Misty Maze. Since I had defeated a member of Captain O'Kilowatt's crew at Cloud City, I figured I could do the same here. True to its name, the Misty Maze was easy to get lost in. There were also skeletons everywhere, which is never a good sign. Speaking of signs, I found a mysterious note inside of the treasure chest along with another key. The note said, I have searched throughout every corner of the Misty Maze and there is no trace of Captain O'Kilowatt's buried treasure. I did find this key though, so whoever finds this treasure chest might have a chance to use it. What were these keys? It looked just like the one the ghastly gust dropped. Suddenly, I was attacked by the skeletons. They must have been guarding this treasure chest for Captain O'Kilowatt. Take this! You can't stop second gear! I found my way out of the maze with the key in hand. On days 20 to 22, I went to the beach on the edge of the island and fought some aggressive walruses. They weren't that tough now that I had gotten stronger, so I was able to gather their tusks as material. I mined some pearl blocks so I could trade it to the craftsmen in exchange for a better helmet and boots. Here you are, Zozo. New and improved armor for a pirate captain. Thanks, Titus. With stronger defenses, I went back to the ancient ruins. I had the feeling that I could find a third key there. The dinosaur last time was still roaming around, but I was geared up in more ways than one. I made short work of it. Wow, I really have gotten stronger. But not strong enough. Who are you? I am Anubis, the true guardian of the ancient ruins. I've been sent by Captain O'Kilowatt to defeat you here and now. He must really want to protect that buried treasure. Let me guess, it's here in the ruins? You wish, the treasure is in a place where you'll never reach. Was the buried treasure not in any of the terrains I'd been to so far? Just then, Anubis was struck by a lightning bolt. It was Captain O'Kilowatt. But why did he attack his own crewmate? You were a fool to give away clues so easily, Anubis. I have no room on my crew for fools. I was tempted to fight him then and there, but I knew I wasn't strong enough. So I just grabbed the key he dropped and ran away. On the way out of the ruins, I grabbed some spice from the ground. Just what Skylar was looking for. On days 23 to 26, I returned to the base with all three keys and also the spice for Skylar. Thanks, Zozo. Now I can complete my ultimate recipes. Let me know if you make anything with meat in it. You still have to catch some animals if you want a meal to happen. Well, you're the boss, Skylar. No, I am the chef. You're the boss. I thought I was the captain. With the previous dangerous terrains unguarded, I could now gather materials from all of them. Yes. But first, I went into the cave to mine some iron ore so I could upgrade my stone tools to iron ones. That way I could mine even deeper. Just because I know there isn't treasure doesn't mean I shouldn't dig. I decided to go back to the ancient ruins where there are stone brick blocks. These are perfect for building a sturdier wall. And now, I was even able to build floating buildings just like in Cloud City. Borrowing some of the designs I saw in the Misty Maze, I created a series of secret passages that could be used to mislead any enemy pirates who tried to sneak into the base. Skylar came out of the house to give us a leash to help with the animals. 
I could use it for capturing animals, and I made sure to gather up some of the tastiest creatures I could find. I buffed up my defense by building a wall out of the strong blocks I had found. Even though the base was coming along great, I still wondered what to do with the three keys that I had gotten from fighting Captain Okilowat's crew. I'd have to explore the island tomorrow and see if there was a way I could use them. On days 27 to 31, I traveled to a part of the island I had never been to before. It was a valley covered in smog. I wonder where it's all coming from. Even though it was hard to see, I could sense somebody sneaking up on me. Who's there? A pirate I had never seen before stepped out of the smog. Oh no, I've been found. Forgive me, Captain. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. Probably. Who are you? My name is Jovi the Ice Pirate. I'm a member of Okilowat's crew, but I can't stand by and let him imprison other pirates anymore. You should come back to base with me. It's much safer out there than hiding in this smoke cloud. Okay, I'll bring my special materials as well. They can only be found in this valley. Jovi went to mine some of the material, and I left the smog valley with him to return to the base. His special material, bronze dragon scales, were perfect for crafting an even stronger suit of armor. In the meantime, I added another tower to the base, and of course, more pirate flags. I also gave the outside of the wall a decorative wooden layer to make it look more like a pirate ship on land. Wow, that's perfect! Then Jovi came walking up to me and gave me a few samples of the bronze dragon scales. Now to go see Titus about that armor. I went to visit the craftsman and showed him the special materials. It seems like they brought back memories for him. These materials come from an island, far away from here. They're from a suit of armor I made back when I was undertaking the challenge. Wait, these are your materials? Yes, and the armor I built using them was one of my best. It belonged to a very dear crewmate who is sadly no longer here. I'm so sorry, Titus. Do you think we'd be able to rebuild the armor? We have to go back to that valley. The rest of it could still be down there. On days 32 to 35, Titus and I went to the Smog Valley and searched for the remaining pieces of the armor. The smog was so thick that it made it difficult to find anything, but it turned out that it was coming from some kind of huge factory. I noticed there was a door on the side of the factory with three keyholes. Those must be where the three keys go. Just then, we were ambushed by several giant trolls from the smog. There's so many, how can we stand a chance? Captain Zozo, you must unlock the door. I'll hold them off. But Titus, you're not strong enough. Who do you think I am, Captain? I am the craftsman, and these are my crafts. Just then, Titus equipped a really cool set of armor I'd never seen before. Now go, find out what's in there. I ran to the door and unlocked it, knowing that I may never see Titus again. His armor could survive the attacks of those giants, but not for long. Using the time Titus bought me, I put all three keys into the door and it began to open. Yes. Titus, come on, it's not too late. But it was. I turned and saw him fall to the ground after an extremely hard hit from the giants. Titus! I ran in and knocked down one of the giants, surprised at my own strength. But the next one hit me and took away most of my hearts. Captain, I've done all I can. Equip my armor. It's the only way. Okay. With Titus's enchanted armor, I fought back against the giants, fueled by the rage of what they did to my friend. When they were all defeated, the armor vanished into thin air. It was gone, and so was Titus. On days 36 to 39, I went through the large door that led to the factory. It was dark inside, but I soon found a light switch. I flipped it on and saw this place was up to something really sinister. Giants, like the ones outside, were being modified on a conveyor belt to become tricked out cyborgs. These must be Captain Okilowat's secret weapons. What is he planning to use them for? Meet the intruder alert. Uh-oh, an evil robot. Time to show no mercy. I hit the mechanical menace hard, and he was launched back. Yes. I was ready to go for round two when the robot seemed to stop fighting. Where am I? Where's the rest of my crew? Where's Titus? You knew Titus, Mr. Robot Man? Yes, we were members of the same pirate crew. I was captured here and turned into a cyborg. No way, that's terrible. I wondered if Okilowat would do the same to me and the rest of my friends if he captured me. Captain Okilowat's first mate did this to me with his powers. He's a man named Retro Gary who ate the Borgborg fruit. He has my real body. We have to get it back. Don't worry, we will for Titus. Thank you! It seems like I was able to snap Titus's old friend out of his cyborg mind control. 
Sometimes you gotta beat the mob inside to save yourself. On days 40 to 43, I built a memorial to Titus on the front of my base. Rest in peace, legendary craftsman. You did everything you could, Zozo. Thanks, Stan. This base is the safest place on the island now. We should let some of the good people from Cloud City live here. Good idea! I built some more floating dwellings inside the walls of the base. That way, the Cloud Villagers could live the way they were used to. We went to the Cloud City to invite the friendly Cloud Villagers to come live with us, and they agreed. There are so many people living at the base now, and all of them are counting on me to find the treasure. I can't let anybody down. I promise I'll become the king of the pirates. I believe you can do it, Zozo. Oh, hi, Jovi. How are you liking the base? I'm really grateful for the fact you took me in. I also thought I should tell you where you can find more of those materials I brought with me. You mean the pieces of Titus's armor? Yeah, there's more of it at my old hideout near the Smog Valley. It's in a badland where Captain O'Kilowatt tests his lightning powers. Sounds like I'll need to be careful, but it means getting the rest of those materials. I have to do it. For Titus! If I could complete that armor, I'd be able to face Captain O'Kilowatt and his secret weapons with my friend's ultimate work. I prepared for a journey to the Badlands. On days 44 to 49, I traveled to the Badlands. Lightning strikes had destroyed this place. There were no mobs anywhere, not even friendly ones. But there was Captain O'Kilowatt. He was practicing his lightning strikes, just like Jovi said. I see you there, Zozo. You're almost halfway out of days to complete my challenge. Are you sure you want to take me on now and cut it short? I'm only here for the rest of Titus's armor, O Kilowatt. I'll deal with you later. Oh, how brave. But I'm afraid you have misunderstood whose armor it is. I am the one who controls the island, so everything on it is mine. I have already gotten those materials for myself, and I'm going to use them for my secret weapons. You mean those cyborg giants? Yes. In fact, I have a prototype for you to play with right now. Enjoy, Straw Hat Zozo. Captain O'Kilowatt disappeared by summoning lightning on himself, and one of those giant cyborgs showed up, armed with special futuristic enchantments. I was not going to back down. The cyborg was big and had a huge reach, but I was quick and ran around to avoid its attacks. I launched a barrage of second gear punches at the cyborg, toppling it over. Some secret weapon you are, you belong in the recycle. But even that wasn't enough. The giant cyborg started chasing me towards a rock wall. On days 50 to 53, I was backed into a corner. The giant cyborg was still attacking me in a canyon. I climbed up the wall with my centipede leggings and dropped down to strike from above. Gum Gum Battle Axe! That one looked like it did some real damage. I had to keep going while I had the advantage. The mob was really strong, but I managed to knock it out with some more punches. Man, that was just one of those secret weapons. If more were unleashed, I don't know how I could win. I need to go home and eat some good food. I couldn't worry about that now though, because the giant had dropped some of Titus's armor pieces. When I touched them, I could see Titus and his crewmates in the past. I could see them exploring all of the Misty Maze, Cloud City, and the ancient ruins. All of them were wearing powerful suits of armor. In the ancient ruins, Titus even knocked down a tree with only one swing. That's how strong he was. It seemed like they almost defeated Captain O'Kilowatt back in the day. But Retro Gary helped out and turned Titus's friend into a robot. He destroyed the armor, and using a slingshot, he scattered the pieces of it throughout the Badlands in the valley. I had no idea Titus had been holding on to so much sadness. I'll make sure to complete the challenge so that nobody will ever have to face a defeat like that here again. On days 54 to 57, I made my way back to the factory to see if I could learn any more from Titus's robot crewmate. When I arrived on the inside and flipped the switch, I saw that a bunch of the giants had broken the conveyor belt and started to run free. This is probably bad for Captain O'Kilowatt in the long run, but it's bad for me right now. Those giants seemed really angry. Looks like you could use some help. Thanks, Robo Man. A friend of Titus is a friend of mine. Working together, we managed to defeat the ordinary giants. They dropped some kind of giant power up, too. Huh? I suddenly grew bigger and became Luffy, third gear. Yo ho ho! It looked like I arrived at the factory just in time, too, because the conveyor belt was filled with the rest of the armor shards. Yes, I wore these once. When I was fully human, they belong to you now. Thanks, Robo Man. I promise to get your body back. 
When I finally made it back to the base, I went to Titus's chest and picked up the last armor pieces I needed. In the chest, I also found Titus's hammer. I went to the crafting table, and doing the best I could, I put the special armor back together. Somehow, it felt like Titus was watching over me, guiding me through the crafting process. I swung the hammer over the pieces on the crafting table, and the recipe was complete. I equipped the armor, and it looked like it would protect me really well. Almost a bit too much. The helmet provided so much protection, I could barely see out of it. Maybe for now I'll take the helmet off. I like being able to see where I'm going. Now that I had put on the restored suit of armor, I saw another vision of the past. Titus was digging into the ground at the tropical forest. What did this mean? Should I try to search for treasure there? On days 58 to 62, I stocked the animal pens and loaded up the farm with all the delicious ingredients I found while exploring. Onions, rutabaga, sweet berries, and beetroot. Now the meals for my crew would be the tastiest of all time. Skylar made a big meal for everyone at the base. We set up a large picnic table, and for once, things were peaceful around here. Bon appetit! Enjoy your feast! Oh boy! There's meat, veggie, all of the food groups! This is the best! After dinner, I decided to mine so that I could have powerful tools to match my new set of powerful armor. Since one of my moves is called Gum Gum Battle Axe, I figured along with the rest of the tools, I could craft a diamond battle axe to use for chopping wood and enemies alike. They'll never see this coming! Yes. I decided to have the inside of the base look like a pirate ship to match the outside, and lined all the inner walls with dark wood. I made sure to keep lots of chests around to fill with gold. Can't have a pirate base without any treasure of our own. When all of this is over, I'll have Okilowat's treasure in here too. On days 63 to 66, I went back to the tropical forest with Stan to see if maybe we could find the spot where Titus had been digging in the flashback. I don't see anything that looks like that place. What about you, Stan? Why are you asking me? I didn't see the flashback. Oh, yeah, right. You did say he was digging, so maybe you should try that hole over there. This looks a little deeper than the- Whoa! I'm falling in! I tumbled down into the shaft, leading deep down below the ground. If I hadn't caught myself with my wall climbing, that might have been it. But look at this place. There's a huge, empty chamber lit by torchlight. That's weird. It feels like there should be something in here. I dug around on the floor and found an unusual sarcophagus hidden among the rocks. It flung itself open, and out came a mummy! Back off, you gift-wrapped meanie! Thank you for setting me free. I've been trapped inside that box ever since my captain lost the silence challenge. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you were going to attack me. Say, what was your captain's name? His name was Captain Anubis. I was the most loyal member of his crew. Is he okay? No, I'm sorry. But I'm putting together a crew to stand up to Captain Okilowat. Do you want in? Of course. I don't like that guy at all. Also, this place was supposed to be where his treasure was, but he only put me here. Where do you think the rest of it is? I don't know, but first things first, you've got to help me get out of here. Oh, we can just climb out. Oh, right. Only I can do that. On days 67 to 70, I used the diamond tools I crafted to dig a tunnel leading back above ground. I broke open some of the blocks, and a devourer jumped into our path. He growled and hissed. Please tell me you're friendly too. It definitely wasn't, because it tried to devour me. I guess that's where the name comes from. If we don't defeat that devourer, we'll never get out of here. Don't worry, mummy. I'm your captain now, and I won't let anything bad happen to you. I meant those words too. All the other pirates who came to this island before me may have lost their way, but I made a vow that I'd keep everyone safe. That's how I'd become the king of the pirates, and no devourer would stop me. After I finished it off, the mummy and I continued our progress towards the surface. No other mobs showed up to attack us, so the rest of the journey was easy. Before I knew it, we were back near the top of the hole inside the tropical forest. Stan was waiting for us, and he seemed happy to see that I survived. Great to see you, Captain Zozo. But who's that mummy guy with you? I was once part of the crew of Anubis, but after seeing the bravery of Zozo, I've decided to join up with you guys. Well, the more the merrier. We all went back to the base together and had another delicious dinner to celebrate our crew getting even bigger. It was great to see so many people joining the team. I couldn't help but feel like we were all becoming one big happy family. On days 71 to 74, I was in the Badlands when I saw smog was everywhere again. I decided to take a look around. <coughs> it's kinda hard to breathe in here. But this looks just like the smog in the valley where I found that factory. That must be important. But what's even more important is that you... 
You find more of my adventures by searching ZOZO in the YouTube search bar. I walked for a long time before I saw exactly what I expected. Another factory for making those cyborg giants. I might have stolen back the armor pieces, but it seems like Captain Okilowat still hadn't given up on his plan. And there he is. I'll have to take him on. Foolish pirate. Have you forgotten that I train here? Taste me lightning. He started hitting me with lightning bolts. The armor was helping me avoid the worst of it, but he was too fast for me to get a lot of hits in. I realized I was still too weak to beat him, so I hightailed it out of there. I'll have to return to that factory later. But until then, the Badlands are off limits. That terrain is too dangerous to take lightly. On days 75 to 78, I was back at my base and doing some more work on the interior. Mostly by making the dining room bigger and more decorated. This is the place where everyone eats together, so it's gotta look nice. While I was thinking about all the friends that were already here to stay, I was surprised to get a visit from the robot. Zozo, I've come to help you unlock the full power of the armor you are wearing. This armor can become even more powerful? Do you remember back when Titus wore his own special armor? How it made him way stronger than usual while also granting him protection? Yeah, I saw both of you use that armor power in the flashback too. You can use it too. It was powered by the friendship between Titus and myself. That's our secret weapon. But how do I do it? I became friends with Titus while he was alive, but now he's gone. But I'm still here, Zozo, and I've come to give you what you are missing. I'm going to give you my friendship. Right. We fought together at that factory. We're definitely friends now. I accepted his friendship, and the power of the armor began to awaken. At the same time, so did my own power. I grew again, becoming Luffy fourth gear. Now I have 45 hearts. I'm almost strong enough to defeat Captain Okilawat now. I can feel it. On days 79 to 84, I decided to destroy the new factory with my fourth gear strength and supreme armor. For Titus, of course. And also because now I actually could probably do it. There are a bunch of those cyborg giants, but they were incomplete without the armor pieces that now made up my armor. You're no match for the power of friendship. My crew gives me strength. It was amazing to see how much stronger that I had become. These giants that were once going to be an unstoppable army were now completely unable to beat me. I feel like I can unleash even more strength. Gum Gum Super Jump. I grew massively, so I jumped on top of the factory, breaking through the roof. There were more robots inside the factory too. Look. He wears the captain's armor. Were these guys part of Titus's crew as well? Yes, we were captured and made into robotic servants by Retro Gary. Our real bodies are with him. Wow, I really need to do something about him. It seems like he's inconvenienced just about everyone. And how? Also, each of us kept a little bit more special material hidden away in case the captain ever came back for it. Excellent, I could use that to make some tools out of yes. it. Goodbye, diamond tools. Hello, special material tools. Now I've got a full set of armor and everything made of a material that gets stronger with friendship. I might as well call this stuff friend metal. On days 85 to 89, I got back to base, only to find that there were mechanized mobs attacking. Could there have been more cyborgs? No way, I thought I got rid of them all. Don't worry, everyone. The captain is here to help. These cyborgs were made from the devourers rather than the giants. It seems like Captain Okilowat had branched out and started making minions out of other things. They started retreating, but I'm gonna follow them back to the source. You won't get away that easily. I ran as fast as I could until I bumped into someone. It was another human, and they appeared to be carrying a bow and arrow. You can call me Sharpshooter. I came here from the Island of Snipers in search of buried treasure. I was challenged by a pirate captain who controlled lightning, that if I didn't- Sorry to interrupt, but I'll need to stop you right there. I'm actually on that quest right now. Oh, having any luck? Luck? Not exactly, but I'm doing pretty well at this point. Well, uh, let me know how it goes if you manage to get the treasure. Thanks? Personally, I think it has been more trouble than it's worth. The real treasure has been the friends I've made along the way. On days 90 to 94, I found that the cyborgs had gone back to a third factory. Man, how quickly can they build these things? This one was the biggest factory of all, and I could tell why. 
because Retro Gary was right there, ready to fight with me. Well, how do you do, Straw Hat Zozo? Your crew has become quite the source of trouble for my boss, so I'm gonna make sure that you're no longer a threat. You can't beat me, Gary. I've got the power of friendship on my side. Your power of friendship is no match for the power of my Borborg fruit. Cyborg devourers, combine with me and go into Super Mecha Retro Gary mode. Retro Gary combined with all of the minions to become one super powerful cyborg. This would be a tough fight for sure, but if I won, I'd be able to get all of Titus's crew's bodies back. I swung my special material axe at Retro Gary, and it seemed to do a little bit of damage. He can be hurt, which means that I can win. His attacks were really strong, but so was my armor. I stood my ground and continued to hit him over and over again. On days 95 to 97, Retro Gary still hadn't admitted defeat, but then again, neither had I. Borg Borg Blaster! Gum Gum Mallet! We traded attacks until I noticed some of the cyborg parts were starting to fall off of him. He was getting smaller with each attack. Yes. Soon he'd be back to normal, and that's when I could take him out. Captain O'Kilowatt and I are going to create an army of invincible cyborgs created from the world's strongest pirates. And both you and that armor are going to be our finest work yet. Me? Become a cyborg? You're dreaming, Gary. But here's a better dream. I'm gonna be king of the pirates. And with one final punch, I smashed his robotic body into pieces. Before his power faded away, Gary laughed maniacally. Apparently, he had one more secret left to reveal. Zozo, there is no treasure. It was just a story we came up with to lure pirates here to this island. The whole time, our plan was just to gather the raw material of our cyborg project. The other pirates were too weak, so they just became those low-level servants. If only I won against you, we'd finally have a perfect subject. With that, his power reached zero. Could it be true? Was there really no treasure? Either way, I'd have to take down Captain Okilowat to protect my friends, my crew, and the world from his evil plan. On day 98, I returned to the base and told everyone what happened. To my great delight, all the members of Titus's crew had gotten their bodies back when I defeated Retro Gary. <laughs> it seems our friendship with Titus was strong enough to grant you victory in this battle. It's not over yet. I've still got Okilowat to take care of. We'll be right behind you. I stopped by the house to visit Skylar, who had been preparing a welcome back meal for me ever since I left to go fight Gary. Here you go, Captain. This has all of the best ingredients. Wow. It was made as a sign of my loyalty to this crew and also our friendship. Thank you, Skylar. I don't know where I'd be without you, and I'd definitely be going hungry. Just then, Jovi and the Mummy approached. It seems you made good use of all that special material. It wasn't the material, Jovi. Captain Zozo's courage is what allowed him to defeat Retro Gary. If I'm being honest, I think it was a little bit of both of you guys. It was material! No, it was courage! Material! Courage! Okay, okay, guys, I get it. Just stop fighting. I was so thankful to see that everybody was safe and sound after the cyborg attack on the base. Well, almost everybody. There was still one important friend that I had to go see. On day 99, I headed back towards the destroyed village where everything had begun almost 100 days ago. That was the place where Captain Okilowat had challenged me, but now it would be the place that I would challenge him. But before that could happen, I remembered to walk through the tropical forest and say hello to Stan. Hey, Zozo, it's your toucan man, Stan. It's hard to believe how much we've been through to get here. You're telling me, friend. But treasure or no treasure, we're gonna see this through until the end. Somehow I knew you'd be the pirate to save us all. I knew it from the moment you set foot on this island. Stan and I walked together to the starting point and saw that Captain Okilowat hadn't shown up alone. Your time is almost up, Zozo. You may have defeated Gary, but I still have a few more giant cyborgs left. And once I juice them up with my full lightning power, they will be invincible. Yeah, right. That was Skylar's voice. She was here. And so was the rest of the crew. We've got this, Captain. We'll take on the giants while you settle things with Captain Okilowat. My crew sprung into action. I was so grateful and proud of all of them. But now I had to do my part. I was going to send Captain Okilowat flying once and for all. 
He flew away into the clouds. By grabbing onto Stan, the two of us flew upward into his last retreat. On day 100, I landed on the Cloud City Island and came face to face with Captain Okilowat. You shouldn't have lied about the treasure, or turned people into cyborgs, or destroyed Anubis, or all the other evil things you did. You're a really bad captain, you know that? Oh, spare me. We're pirates. We're supposed to be the bad guys. We steal things. We're selfish. And we don't let something like friendship stop us from reaching our goals. That's where you're wrong, Okilowat. I won't even call you a captain anymore. You're just the guy I need to beat before I become the king of the pirates. King of the pirates? Ha! Huh. Keep dreaming. I will. I'll never stop dreaming. I'll never give up. And I'll never let you hurt anyone else. We charged at each other and began our greatest battle yet. His lightning bolts were as potent as ever, but with my courage to guide me, I pushed through. I channeled my inner anger and suddenly grew in size. Then I landed a four-gear punch on him. He looked like that really hurt. Guess he wasn't as tough as I thought. He was just really good at dodging. He was at the edge of the cloud, and I punched him super hard, sending him flying to another smaller cloud. I used my gum gum super jump ability to get to him. One more attack like that, and you're done. You'll never hit me again. I'm going to destroy this cloud with me lightning powers. Feel the storm. Sure enough, the clouds began to fall away beneath me. You can't make me fall. Too bad I had nowhere else to jump. This left me as an open target, and Okilowat launched everything he had at me. This be the end, Zozo. No, it's the beginning of my dinner. I pulled out Skylar's welcome back meal and ate it. My health and hunger were instantly restored. Yummy. What? Good food from a good friend can weather any storm. You still can't hit me. Over here, Zappy. Stan flapped around near the bad guy's head. That was the only chance I needed. I jumped off my platform and smacked him in the face. Bye-bye, gum gum fist. That did it. Okilowat was sent flying into the distance, never to be seen again. As I fell back towards the ground, I smiled because I knew there was no way this was the end. My entire crew sat on a trampoline made of cloud blocks to catch me. I landed safely among all my friends. They were the real treasure, one that could never be buried. And as Pirate King, I treasure them always.